Oleg Tyagnibok founded Svoboda, an openly radical nationalist party preaching the good old principles of Bandera. Purge Ukraine from the Jews and Russians, Ukraine for Ukrainians, and so on. His statements got him fifth place in the Simon Wiesenthal Center Top 10 Anti-Semitic World Leader Rankings of 2012. But also, sadly, attracted numerous followers. The most prominent among these extremist groups is an organization called Svoboda. The Svoboda Party, which traces its roots to the Ukrainian Partisan Party of World War II, was loosely allied with Nazi Germany. Until 2004, Svoboda had been called the Social Nationalist Party, a deliberate reference to the National Socialism of the Nazis. And we're not throwing the term neo-Nazi around here as an empty slur. The leader of Svoboda, Holitani Bok, has openly targeted Jews and ethnic Russians in Ukraine for many years. In 2004, he was kicked out of Viktor Yushchenko's government for a speech calling for Ukrainians to fight against a quote, Muscovite Jewish Mafia. And in 2005, he signed his name to an open letter to the leadership of Ukraine entitled, Stop the Criminal Activities of Organized Jewry. And none of this was a secret. The BBC was already reporting on the danger that Svoboda's rise posed back in 2012. And the EU passed a resolution that same year condemning Svoboda as, quote, racist, anti-Semitic, and xenophobic. Yet somehow the US government thought it was appropriate to back these extremists. This is a picture of Victoria Nuland from the US State Department meeting with Ole Tanibok in February. And this is a picture of Senator John McCain sharing a stage with Tanibok in December. But why would the US government work with neo-Nazis? 